All right, g'day guys. I'm back outside tonight with the SV Boney scope. This is the 102 that I recently um, did a little um, little review on with my mono setup. But tonight I've just shoved the um, the ASI 482 one shot color camera. It's not a cooled camera. I've got some flats and some darks applied here, and I'm in really close as you can see. It's a pretty small sensor, so I'm in quite close on the Carina Nebula. But I just wanted to point out, obviously you know, one of the sort of, I guess, shortcomings as a scope like this is that it is more suited to narrowband. You can see here with a one-shot color camera, you know, you're getting this fringing, this sort of purpley bluey fringing around these bright stars here. So, like I said, um, you know, it's just something that you want to consider. For me, you know, I'm mainly going to be using that scope. It's actually mainly for solar imaging, really. It's not particularly for deep sky. But when I do use it for deep sky imaging, um, I'll be using it with narrowband, pretty much uh, mainly doing mainly doing SHO or at least doing um, or at least doing the um, broadband filters separately. But um, yeah, it's probably like you see from these images. I mean, you could you could probably edit some of this out I mean, in PixInsight if you were pretty good at editing. But it's at least worth just sort of noticing this um, this sort of effect that you're getting here on these um, these brighter these brighter stars here. All right, guys. Before I move on to um, the moon, I just wanted to show this is in PixInsight. So this is our little stack. We got about 20, 30 second exposures of Carina, and it looks pretty bad. So I just wanted to show it's not. I know we've got these halos, so we do have those to kind of deal with, but it's not. Um, you know, it's probably not quite as as bad as it looks if we just get rid of our edges get just a couple of little artifacts there whoops there we go that'll do um you know i'm not a whiz with um picks insight but we just get rid because it's one shot color so we'll just put background neutralization on it and then just um just give that a stretch now so that's already looking better look blur exterminator of course is a great tool so um and you can i mean i've not played around a lot with the adjust star halos that might help a little bit with these probably not a great deal but it's certainly going to help at least if we put blur exterminator over that for a second it's going to help a bit i mean you can see look that in itself look mate quite a difference just in backwards forwards backwards forwards you know might I don't know if it would I don't know maybe we could try a second blast <laughs> yeah I mean you probably wouldn't go you probably wouldn't want to go mm, like I said this <clears throat> this day is probably a bit um Um, under which one is it under or over sampled with this camera anyway because of the pixel scale <coughs> but anyway that's a that's at least that's at least better than those big halos and then of course what you can do is use you can use um sterix um star exterminator sorry and um you could at least get rid of the stars out of your image first Yeah, so you could, you know, you could. Oh, that probably wasn't the best example because I hadn't had the image stretched already. But um, let's just go back. Let's just go back a second. Let's put those stars back in. Let's just give this a little. Let's just kind of give this a little stretch, just a really, just a really gentle stretch, so those stars are really kind of muted um that'll do just it just to take the stars out like that um so let's say at that point now we take our stars out and i'm sure that there'll be people um there'll have definitely be channels on youtube that'll tell you much better than this how to deal how to deal with these um 
things like these stars. Um, now we can put more a bit more of a stretch on this, you know, get it looking a bit more groovy. You probably are. You're gonna see if you if you zoom in, you know, you are gonna get artifacts from around those stars like here. But you can use um, things like clone stamp. Um, you can use clone stamp um, to get rid of those. I think there's a tool very similar to that. Yeah, clone stamp. Here it is. So you could you could probably use something um, to get rid of those. It's been a while since I used this, but let's just remember how to use it. Um, control click. Yeah. So if you can click somewhere. Sort out your radius, however big you want it. That's probably a bit too big. Maybe 40. Opacity, softness one. Yeah, you know, you can do, so you can do little things like that. You can see how that's just helped a little bit. I know you don't want to probably play with your image too much, but I'm just, just trying to point out that there are um, things there are things that you can do to sort of help a little bit, sort of alleviate some of these issues. Yeah, that's not good. But anyway, um, so now we've got our stars still over here. There's a few, you know, you can try your usual tricks like SCNR. Um, and then try invert, get rid of any more fringe in there. Invert that back. Um, you know, it's looking a bit better at least. You could even try bringing down, you know, you could even just, you know, just so you, brought these in a bit, maybe just bring the curves down on them. So just trying to make the point here that, you know, even though it's like I said, it's not probably the best, it's probably not really a best matchup for this um, a one shot color camera with this SV Boney scope, but at least there are th little things that you can do. Um, there'll be pics in site videos to let's show you how to do these kind of things. Let's just put those back together anyway. Like I said, it's just got a really quick, this is just a really quick, nasty, um, it's like 20 images. So, you know, I'm not gonna spend too much time. Um, screen stars. So we'll take our starless view now. We'll take our stars, click on the tick. And yeah, you know, it's it's not too bad, you know, just for a little just for a little quick image. Um there might even be other tools that I've not that I'm not aware of um because I've not really had to use these to be honest a lot. Um but yeah, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's also other things that you can do. But anyway, the point there guys, without me rambling on too much. The point there guys was just to say that um you know, you can still, even with a one shot color camera, you can still do a few things to try and clean these images up a little bit. And like I said, I'm sure there's a lot more techniques out there that I'm not aware of. So anyway, let's move on to the moon now and have a quick look. So look guys, unfortunately tonight, um, I'm not gonna be able to process a moon image just because I've got too many clouds over it. And it's, as you can see, the weather's getting worse and worse. So, um, yeah, that's not going to happen. But look, I've got no doubt looking at that image now, you could definitely get a really nice sh shot of the moon. You could put it through Auto Stacker, you could put it through Registax and sharpen it up. You could bring some, if you're using a one shot color camera for, on it, you could um, you could probably bring some of those colors out in Photoshop if you wanted to do like a mineral moon thing. But yeah, definitely, you know, you get some really nice, you could get some really nice images of the moon and it's great for visually just looking at the moon it's just a really nice um size scope for that so yeah um i think that's where we'll leave it now and uh, um i will um 
I'll catch you um, on the next video. Thank you.